You've heard your whole life that rocket science is the hardest thing ever. But I'm here to tell you that yeah. just researching this topic turned my brain to mush that oozed out of my face. In fact, everything I found told me that doing rocket science in ancient Rome was impossible. But to that, I say fooey. Technically, humans did do this, it just took them 2,000 years, but they weren't even trying. Anywho's, by the end of this video, you'll be one step closer to a full-fledged rocket scientist out of 1.2 million steps. Now you're probably thinking, did the Romans ever actually discover or figure anything out at all in terms of outer space? No. No, they didn't. Besides naming the planets, only the easy ones though. They didn't even have a concept of outer space. But that's neither here nor there, for this is but a thought experiment. Now alright, this is Fred. Sup? Some of you may know him. He's a rocket scientist and we're sending him back in time 2,000 years to see if he can give the moon his first little artificial buddy with Roman technology. What Fred's gonna do is... The bare minimum. We're not making him build a Starlink internet satellite system. This thing won't even be as complicated as Sputnik. More like Sputnik's little ginger half-sister. In fact, not even that. In order to get the Romans help without issues, we'll send Fred back in time with a Netch-a-Sketch. This should be enough to convince them he's a god. Yeah, I'm in charge now. Wielding all the manpower and resources ancient Rome has to offer, Fred's now ready to begin. He'll start with the most difficult part. What do you suppose that would be? The rocket? The fuel? The guidance system? The correct answer is D, all of the above. Any, mini, miny, mo. So he'll just start with the fuel. Now, lots of things burn, but Fred needs something that isn't terribly difficult to make with ancient tech and burns real good. Kerosene is too fussy. Hm. And nitric acid eats everything it sees. So Fred will go with option three, which is ethanol plus liquid oxygen for the oxidizer. Surprise, surprise, he can't start by simply making this stuff. Fred needs his Roman helpers to build a distillation facility, air compressor, and a thermometer first. Mercury and glass were pretty much the only things the Romans did already have, so the thermometer will be easy. Oh wait, none of this will be easy. Mercury freezes at negative 38 degrees Fahrenheit and Fred needs to measure temps way below that. He'll need to build a constant volume gas thermometer. Materials needed. A low pressure bronze bowl. Hold up, stop right there. Now Fred needs to create a way to make a vacuum. The best vacuum you could reasonably get in ancient Rome would be what we call a Sprengel vacuum pump, which was invented in 1865. I won't go into much detail since I did that in this video, but it involves mercury, a thin glass tube, time, and gravity. All of which did or could have existed in ancient Rome. Okay, so they got a bronze bulb with a vacuum inside it. Now Fred needs some helium because it's real picky about its phase state. It'll fight to stay gas for basically ever until he finally loses at negative 452 degrees Fahrenheit, which is only 8 degrees above absolute zero degrees. Luckily, Fred won't need a whole lot of helium, but it'll still be as difficult to get as bobbing for apples with your cheeks while hung over a shark-infested pool. He'll build a dome over a mineral spring to trap the gas, then channel it through pipes into storage bladders. But since nothing in life is easy, this gas contains more kinds of gases than Fred needs. So he's gonna need some calcium oxide, which is simple enough to get, just heat up some limestone, then mix that with our mineral spring air to let the carbon dioxide escape. Now Fred needs to get rid of the other two elements, nitrogen and oxygen. How would one go about doing that? Simple. He just needs to build a frickin' cryogenic freezer. Can I tag out? I don't want to do this anymore. No. He'll need to cool and compress the remaining air into a liquid, which means Fred will need to build a compression expansion regenerative heat exchanger with pipes, valves, and a compressor, which he can power with a water wheel. Okay, that's one more thing the Romans already had. Luckily, people were already cryogenically freezing gases in the 19th century when the Lynn process was invented. So if they could do it, Fred can do it. Since helium stays a gas until almost absolute zero, filtering out the nitrogen and oxygen won't be too difficult. Now that he's got the helium gas, he's got a thermometer that can record temperatures down to hundreds of degrees below zero. I know what some of you are thinking, and yeah, this is all simplified. Just know that creating the thermometer alone took Fred six very unhappy months. Why did I sign up for this? 
On to ethanol. Just ferment some grain and distill out that fire water. Bootleggers were doing this in their kitchens all over the country a hundred years ago. Y'all just keep moving along now. The hardest part about this process won't be making it, but instead building a high security facility to stop the Romans from drinking it all. Creating liquid oxygen is basically a combination of creating ethanol and a thermometer. So this would be much more difficult, but since Fred's already now got himself a distillation facility and a cryogenic freezer, he just needs to liquefy air by getting it real cold, then letting the nitrogen boil off at negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit, which is why he needed the thermometer. And on to the rocket, which won't be any less challenging since the best metal the Romans could come up with was iron, which is way too heavy. So Fred gets to create aluminum. This requires obscene amounts of mining, electricity, and heat. They'll need to mine a ton of bauxite, of which the closest natural deposits are just a quick 5,000 mile away stroll in India. Have fun, guys. <laughs> ah, power feels good. Three years later. All right, let's refine this into alumina. They're gonna use the Bayer process, which involves crushing the bauxite, dissolving it in a hot sodium hydroxide solution, which you get from electrocuting salt water. This is followed by heating that aluminum hydroxide to produce a white powder called alumina. We're giving Fred a break here and letting him reuse his water wheel generator from the neon flamingo he made. And that was the easy half of making aluminum. Fred then needs to send some Romans to Spain to mine some cryolite, which they'll then smelt and mix with the alumina at 1760 degrees Fahrenheit. Fred then needs to beef up his water wheel generator to produce enough electricity to kill 15 elephants in order to zap the solution enough to separate the molten aluminum to the bottom of the pot where it is then siphoned off. And boom, Fred finally has a tiny bit of aluminum. This process will run continuously for years to get the amount needed. It'll be a huge full-time operation as it requires countless carbon anodes that dissolve and have to continuously be replaced along with colossal amounts of fuel. Oh, we got a brief intermission here, folks, so you can like, subscribe, comment, get in a quick set of push-ups. If you're not sure what to comment, just type out an essay on how you think the world will end. And now, back to the feature presentation. During the 15 years it took to make all the necessary aluminum, Fred and his team were making and testing the components for not only the rocket, but also the staging and guidance systems, which include springs, nozzles, latches, governors, diaphragms, bell cranks, gimbals, fair leads, pawls, and plenty of other nonsense words. Basically enough gadgets and gizmos to make Ariel jealous and Thomas Edison wet his pants. This is pretty much how the Russians launched the first satellite ever, Sputnik, into orbit in 1957. The R-7 rocket relied on gyroscopes and accelerometers to track its position, speed, and orientation relative to a known starting point with minimal electronics. And finally, the easiest part, the payload. I told you it wouldn't be fancy. They'll smooth this old dry tree stump down to a sphere, then coat it with the last of the aluminum and polish it to make it reflective so they can admire it from the ground. At last, Fred's got an 80 foot tall, 25 foot diameter aluminum rocket full of fuel and ready for launch. Fifteen years later. They recreated all the parts, but also smelted some zinc to make some copper zinc battery and some simple capacitors, resistors, and vacuum tube electronics to help pitch and timing be more accurate. And voila! I think we got it this time, guys. After three decades, Fred finally puts a satellite into orbit in ancient Rome. <laughs> 